Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for our quarterly review. Please remember to like, share and comment. Uh, we appreciate the feedback for our previous video. Today I'm joined by Michelle Blau, our investment analyst at Portfolio Metrics Asset Management Team. Michelle, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kanya. So Michelle, it's no secret that 2018 was dismal for South African investors. I think the question that everyone has off the, the front of their heads is, where were the safe havens and where were the returns lying? Yes, Happy New Year everyone. Let's hope 2019 bears a lot more uh, upside than we saw in 2018. If, you, if I do a quick review of uh, 2018 performance, Q4 performance as well, 2018 was shocking, whichever way you look at it. The best part of the year is it's finally over. Michelle, please can you take us through some of the key drivers that played a major part in the Q4 performances? Q4 drivers um, and a, a lot of the features did actually present earlier in, in the year and, and Q3 we had the emerging market crisis, but stock specific um, concerns and, and sector specific concerns really plague some of our, our large caps. In particular, British American Tobacco had a dismal year, year down 40%, and there the US FDA came out with a bit of a shock announcement um, saying it looked to ban sale, uh, sales of menthol cigarettes. You also had Richmond, Mondi, Sassel, um, all being impacted by the global trade dispute, and also Brexit. Brexit fears um, a, a likelihood, a more than a greater or a greater likelihood of a No Deal Brexit, impacting the likes of well, well, now Quilter, um, Hammerson into um, also British American Tobacco, but Investec, all your UK dual listed. Okay, so besides stock specifics, um, as mentioned, the global trade dispute ongoing and again the uncertainty surrounding what that looks like, uh, what that means for global growth going forward. Um, Xi Jinping and Trump throughout the year, it was a tit-for-tat tit retaliation um, of tariffs. Thankfully in December a little bit of sanity crept in, they did declare a temporary truce what this means going forward is they'll sit down, renegotiate and hopefully actually come out with a resolution uh, early in the new year. Away from that, the Fed, um, no, Fed hiking cycle or rate normalisation, throughout 2018 we had f uh, four rate hikes, the last being December 22nd. It was well communicated, so there weren't too many big surprises from the rate hike um, normalization but importantly in the last hike the Fed did turn slightly more dovish. Now that did beg the question are they dovish for a reason? Is the US economy now facing greater challenges than previously not? So a little bit of um, concern crept in on the gl global markets into the last two weeks post that rate hike. But from, from our side what does this mean? The rate hike normalization has the impact of, of uh, bolstering the US dollar or interest for the US dollar and this obviously detracts from the emerging markets, emerging market for uh, foreign exchange. So the RAND has been pressured on the back of this. Going forward possibly not as much. Um, the two uh, at the last FOMC meeting the indication was possibly two rate hikes in 2019. Um, it is data dependent and as soon as we start getting signs of a, a softening US economy, recall we are late cycle US um, economy, so you might see that tail off uh, somewhat. Right, the last driver uh, for Q4 and uh, for the year as a whole, and one which I, I'm actually the most encouraged by is we began to see a few green shoots in our local macroeconomic data. You know, we had a reality check uh, first quarter with uh, being plunged into recession. GDP growth fell 2.2%, followed by a further contraction in Q2. Q3, finally, we began to see uh, some recovery. We had a welcome surprise on GDP, growing 2.2% 
uh, courtly. Now what that means going forward is certainly in an election year a little bit of optimism beginning to creep, creep in. Inflation, again, we can take heart. It's, it rem had, has remained within that 3 to 6% band for the entire year. It did creep higher into November, 5.2% was the last read. But with the petrol price coming down in December, you are likely to see that coming slightly off. The concern is risks possibly to the upside on inflation, but nowhere near a, a, a huge hurdle. Um, for the MPC to, to face. Um, in terms of the other stats, business confidence um, improved in Q3. We, we didn't quite uh, continue the, the Q4 confidence, but going into 2019, the expectation is post-election, we will begin to see a little bit more confidence creeping in. You know, with the policy uncertainty, um, uh, the consumer being cash trapped, that sentiment is just not quite uh, turned just yet. Seems like 2018 was quite a tough year for the investor. Michelle, please tell me that 2019 will be a bit kinder to investors' pockets. I wish I could say that with absolute conviction. The, the small areas that, that provide me with a little bit of optimism and that can take heart from is valuations, South African stocks are not expensive, especially relative to other emerging markets, relative to developed markets. Um, we're, we're also standing in a position from, it can't get too much worse. You know, I, I, I don't want to put my hand on, on the Bible to say it's not going to get worse, but we've, we've come through, I would imagine, the worst of it. Um, looking forward, you've got I, would, I believe a more friendly, business friendly government in place. You've also got tighter controls. You know, Ramaphosa, he's surrounded himself with key individuals, the likes of Tito Mbaweni. So, you know, taking a little bit of heart from, from that fact, um, but the year going into 2019 is maybe going to be a year of two halves. To a, we head into an election year, that election possibly in May, could, uh, the date to be confirmed. But so policy in, um, reforms, poli policy stability, political certainty are, are all kind of in limbo um, until we get kind of clarity. And should you get a decisive ANC win, it, it does free up the ANC government to kind of impose some strict reforms and take us to the next level. What we also do require is South African consumer confidence, uh, business confidence, two key trigger areas. As soon as you have sentiment improving in a country, it, it's a domino effect. Confidence instills um, you know, spending, spending instills, instills greater corporate profits, and that just has a knock-on effect on the, in, on the economy. So, going forward, we can't rely on the uh, global backdrop. That, at this stage, is not constructive, um, pretty un unhelpful as, as it stands now. Um, the global uh, glo growth story is under, under threat, um, not falling off a precipice, but it's concerning trade disputes, uh, the US government shutdown, US Fed hiking cycle, Brexit are all concerns um, that still need to be addressed on the global front. Locally, composure, we've had a real test of our faith, um, certainly on equity markets, being well diversified across the asset allocation spectrum has uh, proved helpful. Uh, your bonds, your global investments all remain key to sound and prudent investment. Thank you.